15 years after the war, is Bosnia-Herzegovina ready to join the EU? In the interview, the president of Bosnia-Herzegovina, Jelko Komšić. Mr. President, 15 years since the terrible war in Bosnia-Herzegovina, there are still foreign troops and police in your country. It has a UN-appointed high representative. Is your country a UN protectorate or a sovereign state? Bosnia-Herzegovina is a sovereign state. The function of the High Representative is simply to implement the Dayton Peace Accord. The number of foreign police and soldiers is declining every year. Bosnia-Herzegovina is not a protectorate in the traditional sense. The role of foreign forces is predominantly one of help and support, and also to provide training in Bosnia-Herzegovina. We became a sovereign state on March 1st, 1992, with the Declaration of Independence. Nevertheless, due to the unique circumstances surrounding this war and our unique situation, there is still the need for a high representative. But that won't continue for much longer. The office of the high representative is to be replaced by an EU special envoy. Mr. President, in the early 90s, we Europeans were shaken by the hatred that was shown during the Bosnian War. Can Muslims, Croats and Serbs live together properly today? Have the wounds of war healed, at least a bit? Of course, for those who've lost relatives, it's something that will remain with them for the rest of their lives. But those who have lost someone know they can't continue to live in hatred. It just doesn't work. We must get on with our lives. And in fact, it works better in practice than politicians and others would have you believe. It is possible to live together, and that is the case in Bosnia-Herzegovina. People often paint the situation worse than it is. Of course, there are conflicts, as in any country in the world, where there is nationalism, racism and extremes. But it's not especially pronounced in our country. The situation on the ground is better than is often portrayed in Bosnia-Herzegovina and elsewhere. We're fully aware that we must go on living together, regardless of how deep our wounds are. How are relations between your country and Croatia and Serbia? Our neighboring countries brought us misery and committed sins. Their policies cost the lives of many people and cause great material damage. Things have improved recently, especially with Croatia. You can see with each election that the country is on the democratic path. In the case of Serbia, things looked bad for a long time. The Milosevic regime and system survived there for quite some time. The political, military and security infrastructure was aligned with Milosevic for a long time, as was the whole state apparatus. It only improved considerably when Zoran Djindjic took power. And the current president of Serbia, Boris Tadic, has shown a willingness to improve relations with Bosnia-Herzegovina. I think things are heading in the right direction. Our peoples have a long shared history. We lived in the same country for a long time and are still economically and culturally dependent on each other in many ways. We all want to be good neighbours. But there is a but. It will only happen if there is no interference. Even today, there are various interests and attempts at interference from both of these neighbouring states, and that is not good. However, we hope democracy will solve these problems. Mr. President, Serbian citizens can now travel to the EU without a visa. When will Bosnians be able to do the same? 
kraj proljeća ove godine i početka. We hope this will happen in early summer or at the end of spring. But it's a difficult path and there have been attempts to undermine our efforts. But Bosnia-Herzegovina is doing everything to fulfill the relevant criteria. There are positive signs in the Schengen zone countries and the European Union. And I hope that before the next summer holidays come, we will have been granted visa-free travel from Bosnia-Herzegovina. Mr. President, Croatia is knocking loudly on the EU's door. It looks likely that it will be the next new member state. Serbia says it intends to meet the accession criteria by 2014. What is Bosnia-Herzegovina's goal? If we are to approach this practically and pragmatically, my opinion is that 2014 is also a very good date for Bosnia-Herzegovina, a symbolic year both for entry into the EU and NATO. In my view, 2014 is so important because 100 years earlier, in 1914, events in Sarajevo led to the outbreak of the First World War. That year, 1914, brought disaster to Europe, all the killing across the continent. So I think 100 years later, Southeastern Europe should again be a part of European Union, both politically and economically. A century of wars should be put to an end with a reunited Europe. But of course, I must be pragmatic. A great deal depends on the political will and whether criteria are met. And that applies to Bosnia-Herzegovina too. Serbia says 2014, and of course that's what Serbia is hoping for. But it would also be nice if Ratko Mladic were extradited from Serbia by then, and either in prison or in court at The Hague. There is much to be done in southeastern Europe. Croatia has made the most progress. I'm happy about that because indirectly it's good for us in Bosnia Herzegovina as well. This is not just about grand hopes and plans, it's about political will that must come from the EU and, of course, from us. Herr Präsident, is Germany an advocate for Bosnia within the European Union? Yes, I hope so. Germany has struck a positive tone in relation to Croatia and Serbia, and also Bosnia-Herzegovina. Germany is a pillar of the European Union. And I don't think I'm exaggerating or offending any other country. It's just that Germany is an important country, both economically and politically. And Bosnia-Herzegovina very much desires it as a friend and ally. Mr. President, thank you for talking to us. My pleasure. Thank you for your interest.